Hello, this is National Chess Master R. Rats at chess.com continuing my video series on the Correspondence Team Match played between my video lessons group and the Team Carpe Diem. Uh, this was played on board 155. Our man is uh, Espresso and Monkey and he's playing Doug's 444. Rating advantage to us, high 16s versus low 15s. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, the two games here. Uh, okay. Well, there we go. There it moved. Okay. So we have a, uh, a Sicilian defense. And it's kind of interesting. White plays uh, bishop e2. And what white is going to... What this does is it invites black to try to hang on to this pawn with e5. And that's exactly what black does. Uh, not exactly familiar with all the exact ways to do this. Uh, if you want to... Well, let me rephrase that. Uh, this is going to become a smith Morgan gambit where, where white eventually plays c3. He's going to invite black to hold on to this pawn, and it's kind of a risky strategy because a lot of times black doesn't want to play e5 in a smith Moore. although in some variations of the smith Moore, black will be, have this pawn on e6 and later it will go to e5, kind of a little contradiction. But at, in some variations, it's... Uh, it's not good if black has that pawn up on e5 too quickly. And it's kind of hard to explain unless you really are into the, the, the full analysis of the smith moore gambit, and that's beyond the scope of what I can do. But I think if that's what white's planning, uh, white should bring this bishop to c4 right away. Now, why isn't it drawing arrows? Okay, it's got lag. Oh, okay. Anyway, I think uh, what... Uh, uh, white should do is play bishop c4, not bishop e2. And we'll see more in just a little bit. And black does try to hold on to the pawn. And white develops. And now if you notice, this bishop's kind of getting kind of busy. Now it's moved a second time in the opening. Could it have gone there originally and saved the tempo? Well, let's have a look. Uh, sure, it could have. Uh, well, actually, no, it couldn't. Bishop b5. Hey, there's my arrow is met by queen a5 check picking up a piece because black white doesn't have knight c3 but i think bishop c4 was a better square uh anyway white does recognize that uh the bishop probably doesn't belong on e2 but i still think c4 is a good place for it uh but this is a good time for white to go ahead and play c3 now if he's going to go into this line anyway so white's given up a tempo no matter how you slice it and Black needs to get some development here. And here comes c3. And now uh, we've got uh, similar positions with Smith Moore, but again, this bishop is usually on c4. Okay. Now black takes that option away from white, although would white want to move that bishop a third time? Okay. Queen e2 is a Smith Moore type move. And bishop g5 is often played. Yep. So, and. Often black does play a6. Now, I've been talking about these rook pawn pushes. They're not as bad when you're uh, you're attacking something with them. Uh, sometimes it, it's better not to uh, push it at all. But, you know, the bishop's already there, and, and black's trying to break the pin. Uh, not necessarily a bad idea. Often, though, in a smith Moore, even though black has taken this diagonal, putting the bishop on g4 is good because you get a pin of your own. And then once you break the pin on this knight, uh, knight d4 is threatened. So uh, a6 isn't necessarily a uh, uh, a bad move, but a lot of times you don't need to make a move like that because off, often uh, this this piece will move again on its own. So save a tempo. Uh, what else does the bishop have other than to take the knight? Well, it can back up to a4 or d3, or come back to c4 and offer an exchange. But since white's moved this piece twice, I think it's going to stay there. So we're not going to criticize a6 as one of those rook pawn moves, as I have been, because black didn't play it to prevent something to go there. Uh, it's not altogether bad, but black should be developing his pieces. And here we have another uh, push of the rook pawn, and I'm not going to criticize this, again, for the same reasons. Uh, you're not playing this to prevent a bishop from going there or a knight going there. It's already there, and black's trying to drive it all, uh, trying, to, trying to drive it out. And he succeeds. And black does need to think about castling. And except for not having this bishop on c4, 
White's very close to having the normal moves of a Smith Mora. Okay, and then here comes the pin, and he kicks it. It goes back, and I'm not going to criticize that Rook Pawn push uh, for the same reason. It, it wasn't played just as a move to prevent a pin. It was played to, to drive it off. But here, uh, White just blunders. Uh, in his effort to break the pin, he he just uh, blunders upon. Let's see. Uh, wait, went too far back. G4. Can can White play G4? Well, the first question is, can Black sacrifice? And every every case is unique. Sometimes he can, and sometimes he can't. Okay. Now, uh, White has given up. Uh, I'm, I mean, sorry, Black has given up a piece for two pawns. But Black has a very annoying pin. Can Black put another piece on that uh, on that knight? And the answer is, well, yes, he can. But it takes a little bit of time. Uh, the knight could go to d4, but it's it's. Let's let's take a look at that. And just see what happens. I can explain it better. Whoops, it's 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 White's move. Uh, White needs to plan for how he's going to uh, break this pin. Uh, this bishop needs to stay there, otherwise knight d4 will, will cost a piece. Um, let's see. One way is king g2 just to protect the knight. That'll free the uh, free the queen. Let's let's look at that first. Okay, now, so, now how can uh, black apply the pressure? Well, one way is to play f4, or f5, rather. The point here is, if white takes, and you know, I think make, making white take, then black will take back with the queen, and then start piling up on the uh, on the uh, f-file with this heavy artillery and, and win this thing. But at least for the moment, it's pinned. So, uh, can can white get away with playing something like let's try queen e1 that way it's not going to fall into a tempo well maybe f4 comes and now this bishop needs to stay on that diagonal to, to, to hold d4 and maybe maybe uh, uh, black doesn't have enough here uh, it's gonna be hard to get another attacker on that and well white's ready to uh, play play here Bishop e2. So, if white takes with or black takes with the pawn, uh, suddenly we get a new defender of the uh, of the knight on f3. And if castles, this is putting some pressure on f3. Uh, if anything, one th plan uh, black could consider is to retreat the knight to h2. The purpose of this is you're going you're covering g4. You're going to give give up material. Why is it going backward? I didn't do that. <laughs> Chess.com, you're doing funny things. Okay. Uh, bishop, bishop takes. What what White has done here is White's acquired two minor pieces for the rook. Now Black has a whole bunch of pawns though, so keep in mind that White sacked two pawn or a pawn out of the opening and. Uh, uh, the question is, does White with his extra piece, because White has, what, seven piece, six pieces? Two knights, two bishops, a queen, and a rook. Uh, Black has five pieces, two rooks, a queen, a bishop, and a knight. That's a lot of pawns that Black has. Uh, I would still probably prefer to play White here. Ideas are coming like knight d5, taking over this b6 square. Uh, the black attack is more or less broken. E3 is under is is or F2 is covered uh, by F, by the bishop on E3. Uh, these bishops are controlling a lot of territory, and you know white with his extra piece should should come out okay. But it's tricky. It's unclear. You know, one of those positions the grandmasters say oh, unclear. They don't know what's going to happen. Maybe black can use his material advantage. But I wouldn't want to play black here. Play g4, but I think it would have turned out be better for him than what actually happened. So let's back it up. Uh, come on, move, don't lag. There we go. There we go. So 
but also if black does play bishop h or g6 the pin is now broken and it's a game it's a chess game uh, the knight can go to h4 and then hop into f5 if the bishop retreats but so g4 would have been a, a very interesting move probably better than what uh, white did because what white does is just uh, drop a pawn and now black has a simple deflection tactic removing the guard uh, after queen c2 uh, black captures the knight and that the, the pawn on g2 was overworked and now black picks up the pawn on h3 so white's already gambled a pawn now he's down a second one and now the queen comes back to where she started white hasn't made any progress so i think black has a pretty clear advantage here and now trading off the queen i think was a mistake why is it backing up? <laughs> I'm not touching anything. Just doing it on its own. Urgh. Okay, please. Version 3. There's so many bugs in version 2 that have come around lately. Okay, but don't 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 trade your queens off when you're uh, when you're down in material because that just helps your opponent reach a winning ending. You need to keep the queens on and try to figure out a way to activate yours. Uh, just the fact that black has his queen penetrating so deep doesn't necessarily mean uh, black is going to uh, get a get a, a uh, an attack here. Although he might, you know, knight knight can come here, prepare, then follow up, try to prepare an f5 break at the right time, sink the knight into f4. Uh, but trading trading just uh, helps helps black out. And here I think uh, white should have grabbed this this guy right now instead of playing f4 because I think he gets some counterplay. <laughs> Why is it putting it back on c3? Urgh. Okay. Um, no, wait a minute. No. See, it changed the... It. Okay. It took, it took these moves back. In 92. Okay, sorry about that. So now I think uh, White's winning his pawn back. Uh, I still like Black... Uh, knight h5. You know, there's a there's a f4 outpost coming for the knight, opening up a diagonal for the bishop. Uh, I still like black. Black has an outside pass pawn, but I this would have given white better chances than what he acquired with his own move f4, which weak starts weakening his uh, his king side, and now he takes, but he's taking a move too late. And now, because black has access g4, he can pile up on f2. And white protects his pawn, but drops the exchange. And normally, this would be the kind of game where I'd say game over. But black kind of lets uh, white back in here in a little bit. And we'll see how and why and where. Uh, black can just mop up at his leisure, but he, he en ends up uh, making the game a little bit too complicated. Not yet, but soon. And, you, you know, we talk about getting rid... My goodness, what is it doing? I didn't click all those moves. Brr. Okay, A4. I'm trying to make a point here. All right. I've talked about this a few times before. If you're down material, you want to you want to trade pawns, not pieces. Uh, trading pawns could get you down to a situation where... Your opponent's down to one pawn, and you have, you're, you could maybe give up your last minor piece for it and uh, draw with, say, rook versus rook and bishop. You go for the uh, Cochrane position, look it up. While your opponent tries to get the Philidor position, look that up. That's talking about the rook and uh, bishop versus bishop, or rook and bishop versus rook ending. No pawns on the board. But sometimes advancing your pawns just makes your pawns weak. Uh, you know, white has weakened the c3 square in the last few moves. Uh, but sometimes better leave your pawns back and let your opponent come and get them because they are going to be weak here, as we will see. Now, here's where I don't th I don't think this was necessary by black. Uh, how else is he going to make progress? Well, he's got to pass pawn over here. Uh, simply, simply double the rooks and bring your king up and stick a rook behind it and start pushing it 
and see if you can to start deflecting any of the white pieces so you can penetrate. But I do see the point of it. Uh, Black's going to acquire a very uh, powerful pass pawn. And the fact that it's bishop of opposite colors does not mean the game is a draw. doesn't mean that at all. The attacking side's always a piece ahead. Uh, but at the same time, you you do make more work work for yourself. Instead of having an advantage of work for a minor piece, that advantage is gone. So uh, Black still has that trump, the H-pawn. He's not using it. Uh, and uh, as pawns start disappearing from the position, you know, the win could become uh, problematical. So you, you got to play these very carefully. Okay, so he holds on to his A-pawn. And now time to activate the king. And here, here's a situation where White's trying to get pawns off. Uh, does he weaken his own pawns in doing so? Well, maybe. We'll see here. But not really because... Uh, 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 what black is cooperating, helping black get pawns off the board. So is black close to a draw? Well, he's down two pawns. White has two pass pawns. One is blockaded. The other one can be blockaded. Let's move forward a little bit because white's going to commit a critical blunder. Now here he shouldn't have moved his pawn at all. Now now he's tied down to defending it, and white can or black can pile up on that pawn at the right time. A bishop and rook can both attack it. Uh, but he's trying, maybe he's trying to clear a4 for his bishop or something. Now, uh, it seems like black has advanced the wrong pawn here. Uh, go with this pawn first, then you can check, and then the pawns are more mobile. The way black plays it, uh, uh, he's weak on the light squares, and, and uh, white has a light squared bishop. And more pawns come off the board, and at this point, not quite yet, at this point, black blunders the game away, and I'll show you how he, how he does it. He plays bishop b2. Maybe he's under the assumption that if he reaches opposite color bishops, he can draw. Well, he gets his opposite color bishops, but he can't draw because he... <laughs> Why did it take it back there? Arr! Okay. Bring it here. Black just pushes his pawn, and white discovers he can't stop it and resigns. So the game ended very, rather quickly. Uh, black is still for choice, but he's got to work to get the point. You know, you got to advance this H, start advancing this H pawn because this C pawn is not going anywhere. Uh, black does have an annoying pin, you know, but make make black prove the win. You know, if you just analyze this out, you see you lose real quick. So I don't think black or white analyzed it out anyway. Pretty much well played by Espresso on Monkey. Let's uh, bring the other game up. What move will it start it at? We never know until we load the PGN and press OK. Uh, move uh, 14. Wow. How did, why did it pick 14? Now, uh, this is an interesting game. Um, Black could have won this. And we will see, even though White gets an advantage. Uh, Queen's Gambit accepted. They just go through the motions uh, for the first few moves. But now, uh, kind of an interesting, or not interesting, but a peculiar strategy by Black comes up. Uh, he's not going to move his queen side for several moves. Let me see. Doesn't move a queen side. We're at move six. I'm just peeking ahead. Uh, he doesn't move anything on the queen side until move 13. That means black is playing with uh, what he has over here on this side of the board. So what does that leave black to move? Well, he's probably not going to move his king. He might move his rook to e8, but though it really doesn't do much good. Uh, if he's moving his pawns, he's weakening his king position. That leaves the bishop and a knight. How can black uh, make a whole bunch of uh, moves and not... Over until move 13 before he moves anything on the queen side. Well, we will see. Uh, white plays queen, queen c2, and black's next move is just bad. It's it's similar to the rook pawn moves, trying to keep something out. You weaken yourself. Uh, 
Black Ops to play G6. And I, I just, it, this, this move doesn't make sense. Uh, it weakens F6, it weakens H6. Uh, White wasn't threatening anything on this diagonal, obviously, and even with the bishop back, he's not threatening anything. Would have been much better to develop a piece. Follow through with the normal plan. You're gonna, you know, eventually you get your own c5 in, a6, b5, get this queen side rolling, uh, like you do in the in the queen's gambit. You know, the databases and books are out there. You use them. And here, white plays h3. I think this is wrong. Is uh, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, why would have been better off to have castled here, and we will see why. What what was White worried about? Black playing knight g4. What's his follow up? There is no follow up, unless uh, White's playing to play g4 and g5, but he still has to deal with his king. He still has to develop this bishop. I don't know what White's plan is, but h3 was just a wasted move. And here, rook e8 doesn't really do anything for black. He's got to get that queen side going. Now the e pawn goes up. And black's playing defense before white's even making any threats. Now, now he says, okay, thanks. I'll have a pin. And now black goes back. So I've done these comparisons before. Uh, when you move a piece back where it started. In effect, let's look at these positions here. It's black to play here. And after black moves here, it's white to play. What changed in black's game between these two? Between these two positions? Nothing changed. So what black is effectively saying is, white, it's your move. But I don't want to move. The rules say I have to move, but I'm going to make you a deal. I'm, I'm going to let you have two moves in a row as long as one of them is bishop g5. Okay? And then you get to make two moves in a row. But the only way you can do something like that is, is to lose a move on the board. And that's what happens. And there it is. There's White's first move, bishop g5. Even though it was Black's move before. Now here comes White's second move, e5. So this kind of explains where why Black was making so many moves on, on the with his kingside pieces and not getting his queenside developed. Okay, an exchange... And now suddenly, uh, look at what black has done to his king side. The black square, the dark squares are, are very, very weak. They weren't weak at all with the pawn on g7. They weren't weak, even less weak so with, with, a, with a dark squared bishop on the board. Uh, and now white got four pieces all nicely posted in the game. Uh, Black still hasn't moved anything on the queen side, other than his d-pawn on the first move. His rook on e8 isn't doing anything. The knight on e7, well, it's okay. Uh, but it's only on the second rank. So now, uh, now Black plays c6. At least he's moving something on the queen side. He's opened up a diagonal. Uh, maybe he's trying to not hang b7. And... Here again, White should castle, but he has an idea. He want maybe this is the idea of H3, trying to uh, bring redeploy that knight. But let's look back when he played H3. Okay, so now maybe we see his plan. He wants to get a knight to G4, but in a way it doesn't make sense because uh, the knight's not. If you're trying to get the knight into H6, it's opposed by this knight. So. White had played h3, and, you know, why doesn't he play knight h2 now? Uh, maybe because he played e4, opening up the diagonal for his bishop. Now he pinned, he kicked, took, and now he comes up with knight h2, but he still should be castling. And here, black sets a little trick. Uh, the natural looking move we, we think in tactics, if we're playing blitz, this is the first move we look at. Uh, or with, you could take with the knight, but it has a little problem to it. Uh, queen, queen comes here. And we'll see in a moment. Uh, white doesn't take. He retreats the bishop. And now white does grab the pawn, but this is a blunder. 
and uh, Black Black could have won this game, and I will show how. Uh, what Black plays is Queen A5 check, and the Knight comes back, and White just bagged a pawn. Uh, one of the books that I really enjoyed reading, oh, what grade was I? Eighth grade, ninth grade. Uh, Combinations, The Heart of Chess by Irving Chernov. <clears throat> and there was one chapter in there that always impressed me. It was called Boomerang Combinations. In other words, what, what is a boomerang? Well, what uh, combination? Well, you know what a boomerang is. It's a Australian weapon. When you throw it, it, it more or less comes back to you. Uh, so... Uh, in a boomerang combination means something bounces back and 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 hits you uh, and that when you least expected it now why is my replay video capture thing flickering Ugh, this computer is weird okay so here's here's the combination what black played was uh, Queen a5 check and white brought the knight back and black was just down a pawn but here's the boomerang take it okay now, this is part of White's combination. Okay, you, I take your pawn, and then I get your bishop. But you see, here's the difference. Now you give the check. Now this knight can't come back to c3 because it's gone. So the rules say White has to get a check. And here's the example of what I said earlier, White should have castled. So there's probably no better square than f1. Your alternative is d1, and he's in the center, or e2, and he's still in the center. So let's try f1. And now here comes the move that black missed, and uh, and white missed as well. And here's the the problem is that the black uh, the black army has trapped the white queen. That queen cannot get out of there. Uh, there is no defense to rook b8. White must lose material. The best I could find was something like this. But I think that Black can live with this. He's gonna. He has uh, a queen for a rook and a bishop. The e5 pawn could fall. The b7 pawn certainly will fall. Uh, Black's gonna win this with correct play. So had Black set this all up, then White would be guilty of falling into one of those boomerang combinations that celebrated author Irving Chernov uh, wrote. You know, I grew up with Irving Chernov's books. Uh, all written in English descriptive. Ir Irving Chernov, Fred Reinfeld, uh, Al Horowitz. Some of these these guys wrote tons and tons of chess books. And that's the stuff I, I grew up with back in the 60s. Okay, so Black missed a, missed a win and instead gets into this line and he still, at least he's getting his queen side slowly but surely developed. Now white to castles. But black's going to mess up again. Black has another chance here in a little bit. We'll see it. His bishop, light squared bishop is pretty bad, but black's, okay, but, uh, black's only down a pawn. And here's an interesting move, knight h6 check. I would think that you'd want to check on f6, and if he takes, you've got a nice pawn wedged in on f6. This is a theme here. How does that knight get out? Uh, you know, I always tell students, when you move a knight, think about where it moves next. And in this case, where does that knight move next? Well, it moves somewhere where it can get captured. And uh, black immediately uh, blunders the game away. Rook h8 gives black great chances. The best I could find for white is just to take this, but white's down a piece. Okay? Uh, no matter how you slice it, white's down a piece. He's got a couple pawns for it, but black has an extra piece. The black king's a little loose, but black should be okay and win this. Okay, so let's back it up. Instead, black weaken, uh, whoops, black sees another way to try to trap the knight. He says, I'll cut off the flight square. But in doing so, he uh, opens up uh, the diagonal uh, b1 to h7, and white capitalizes. Now black can't take the knight with his king. He gets checkmated on h7. But there's a big difference now. 
between this position and the other one, the fact that white now has a battery. Now white can sacrifice on f7, and then here comes a very potent check, and, and black is losing on all variations. Now white blasts, tries to blast files open. Uh, black decides to try to keep them closed, smart move. White says, I will not be denied, and white pretty much has his choice of ways to win this. He chooses to stop and win a rook first, and then comes uh, a check, and black falls into a mating net and resign because black has two choices. He can take the rook or back his queen up, and they both lead to a quick checkmate. Uh, queen takes, it looks like this is mate right now, right? What happens if he backs the rook, the, the queen up? Whoops, went too far back. What happens if you block with the queen? Well, looks like there's an immediate mate with queen f6, taking advantage of the pin. If you want to torture your opponent, you could stop and play here. Just take the queen, but sometimes it's, it's better just to uh, make a picturesque checkmate. Anyway, a uh, little careless there on white's part, and black just needed to spend more time, and he would have found the wins. And that's what we advocate, taking your time to... Uh, to analyze and you'll uncover these things. I mean, that's one of the reasons I played Postal Chess. Uh, I was tired of building up winning games and, and when I was playing a real live game in, in person and then having to discover what I did wrong afterwards or sometimes even during the game. I said, oh man, look what I missed. Uh, I would be so mad at myself. You know, one of the ideas of Correspondent Chess is you eliminate these quick losses. But as the 110 videos before this have proved, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of evidence that a lot of people, most people, aren't spending much time on their moves, or a good percentage of them. You can do so much better at chess if you take your time in correspondent chess. Anyway, I'm a little hoarse. I want to make more videos, but I think I'm just out of gas to make any tonight. So I'll get this uploaded and have about seven more waiting to be made. They will get there. Got 111 made. You know the rest are coming. Thank you so much for your time and take care.